What's up guys, it's Subsy here and in this video I'm going to talk through some of the note taking apps for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. Now I've narrowed it down to 4 apps that I'm going to talk about, 3 in depth and 1 not so much in depth and the reason for that is that I'm not impressed by that at all. I had quite high hopes for that in fact, um, that was my note taking app before I got this tablet and um, it kind of sucks that I can't use it in the way that I wanted to use it. So let's get straight into that one. That one is Evernote. Now Evernote for me was a perfect note taking app. I could use it across everything and it just sort of worked for me. It synced perfectly well. I used it on my phone, on my laptop. But with this stylus input it's quite terrible. Just to use the S Pen on the Evernote app, it takes two clicks to get into it and once you're into it, there's not much that you want to do with it anyway because the options are so limited. When you try to select a pen, all you can choose from is four colours or three different pen sizes and that's it. You can choose the eraser or the select tool after that and that's about it. And that's why I will not use this app at all on this tablet because for me this tablet is all about the S Pen and that's what I'm going to focus on for all of the other apps as well, the S Pen compatibility, anything else regarding that app would be across every other Android tablet. But for me this tablet is more about just that, it's about the note taking apps with the S Pen. So one of the three apps that I would actually suggest trying to use is the Samsung Notes app. Now this provides a really good level of integration with the actual tablet itself because it's by Samsung. And with that as many of you know if you've seen any video about the Galaxy Note, you know about the screen off memo. Now that for me is quick, easy and convenient. And there's nothing bad I can say about it, it just works. But once you do get into the actual device and you open the app itself, it's quite easy to use. Now each note has three options at the top, so you have the sort of text mode, then you have the pen which is sort of the uh, making notes with the stylus mode, and then you have the brush mode which is more of a, like an artistic mode. So I'll focus on the middle section and then a little bit on the brush section. One of the things that I really like about this is that you do have an infinite page so you can keep scrolling down and down and down and that for me is a really good thing because I never know how long my notes are going to get. One really good feature that I like about this is that you can convert your notes to text and that works really well for me it's been quite accurate and you can do it in different languages. I mean I've only tried English but it does support other languages I'm not entirely sure which ones. Another thing that I really like about this app, and it's sort of unique to this app I think, it's not in any of the other apps in this list, is that you can change the type for the eraser. So with the eraser you can erase by line or erase by area. Now with erase by line you can erase every stroke that you sort of do so every letter can be a different stroke and with that you can just go past it and erase everything one by one and that's sort of the default but for me erase by area is the option that I choose because it just erases the section that it shows on the screen for the actual eraser and then once you've made any notes or any drawings or anything like that you can use the selection tool to select something and you can move it around, resize it, do whatever you want to it and with that you can change the style after you've actually written something and that for me is quite awesome. I haven't found many other apps that let you do that so you can change the width of the stroke and the colour of the stroke and for me that's really cool that you can do that after the fact. On top of that you do have the selection of pens that you can choose from to write with, so you can have a calligraphy pen, you can have a pencil, you can change the size, you can change the colour, and it just gives you quite a bit of flexibility to play with. Now another key thing with this app is the S Pen latency or lack thereof. Um, the other apps in this list don't have much of a latency either, but it's just something different about this, it just feels a bit smoother and it just feels like there's less latency to this, I'm not sure if it's actually true, um, but it does feel a lot smoother to use this with the S Pen than the other apps. And now we get into the not so great stuff about this app. One of them is that you can't actually write with the S Pen in the title field. So if you're in pen mode and you're writing something and you want to write the title, you have to use the keyboard to type something into the title field and then continue with your S Pen. And that for me is sort of stupid that you can't do that because they let you convert writing to text so why can't they just let you do that over there as well? And zooming in and out is quite weird so when you try to zoom it takes you to like an entirely new page in a sense and you can't really do much on there and then you tr you go back out and it's just like you're jumping in and out of a zoom view or your writing view and it just seems counterintuitive and I don't understand why they've done it like that. Now another feature of this which I'm not going to put as a good thing because it doesn't work well for me is the um, shape detection so you can click the icon in the corner and when you draw like a square or something or a triangle or a circle um, it detects the shape. But the issue isn't that the shape detection is bad or anything like that, it's just that it's really slow and for me it makes it unusable. 
So if you draw a square, it takes about 1-2 to two seconds for it to recognise a square and then become a square on the screen. And with that, you can't actually erase the shape, so you can't use the eraser to go over the shape and delete it or something. So if we jump into the brush section of this app really quickly, just to give you a quick overview, but I'm not going to focus on this too much because this is more of like a drawing section, not really a note section. So you have a selection of stuff to choose from, from different brushes, pencils and stuff like that, and markers and you can change the colour and it does work really well and the pen recognition again is really good and when you're done with it, it becomes part of your notes. When it does become part of your notes, that is an issue. You can't really do much to it, you can't resize it, you can't crop it. The entire canvas that it was on becomes part of your notes and that for me is sort of a waste of space because a lot of the time there's like so much wasted space on the sides. So overall the Samsung Notes app has the best integration and writing experience combined just because it has that level of like um, screen off memo and when you click the S Pen button you can create a memo straight from there. So there's nothing too special about it but because it works really well that's one of the benefits for using this and that's why it's one of the top three to use for this tablet. Now the next one is by Wacom and that's called Bamboo Paper. This is probably the best straightforward simplistic app there is to take notes on and it works really really well. So when you start off you have like a selection of notebooks and each one can be a different thing, each one can be a different style. And for each notebook you have different types of paper, different types of covers, there's quite a lot of customization around that. One thing that I do have to point out is there is a free version and then within that you can buy the pro pack. So with the free one you get one type of notebook, that's the Thinker notebook. And with that you can select from different types of paper and different colours for the notebook cover. With the Pro Pack you get three more, so you get the Maker, you get the Artist and you get the Writer. And again with each of those you can customise the cover type and the paper type inside, so with each of those you get different types of paper suited more to those types of notebooks. But I think the key for this is that you can do pretty much everything with the free version, so you have access to the basic notebook which isn't much different, it's just a different style of paper and different colours for the notebook. So if we jump into the Thinker notebook you'll see that the UI is actually quite simplistic and that for me is a really good thing. One thing I do have to point out which is quite a big issue for me is that everything is done in pages so you can't scroll up and down and have an infinite view like the other apps. You have to go to the next page and the next page and you can see an overview of the pages which is fine but it's just that sometimes you get to the end of the, the screen and you want just a little bit more but you have to make a new page for that which does become quite annoying. Now the eraser on here is quite unique so it changes the size with the movement so if you move faster with the eraser it's bigger so you can move quickly to delete more or be really precise and move slowly to delete really precisely. And I think for me the palm rejection on this is one of the best because even if your palm is on it and it draws a line as soon as it detects the pen going onto it that line that it just drew gets deleted automatically. So sometimes on this app zooming does become an issue, now zooming is actually really good on this app until it becomes an issue and it's just 1 in 10 times that it becomes an issue and that's because sometimes it will just draw a line instead of actually zooming in. So with the free version you get two pens to write with, one's just a normal pen and the other one is more of a highlighter slash marker sort of thing and for me that first pen is one of the best. With the pro pack you do get four more, you do get a pencil which is okay in my opinion, it's not great. It's probably one of the worst pencils I've seen. So for me, I just stick to one of the pens and they work absolutely fine for me. And again, with each one, you can change the size of the tip or you can change the color that you want to use it with and you have like an entire color palette which can be customized. Now, one key thing about this is that everything has to be done either with your finger or with yes, but you can't actually type anything so it doesn't support text input, which for me is, is not too bad, but for some people that may be something to consider. So because of the simplicity around this, the ease of use and just the sort of feature set that it gives, for me this is the best for purely written notes, just because of how everything's laid out, how it looks and just how it works so easily. Now the final one is OneNote. Now I just want to start with the reason OneNote is on this list and one of the key features for this. If you have an Office 365 account then it just syncs across everything and the integration between every platform is really good for me and that's why this made it onto the list. But that's not to say that it doesn't have really good features otherwise. And one of those is just the flexibility it gives you to draw anywhere and do notes anywhere. So you can type anywhere, you can draw anywhere, you can import images and put them anywhere. Just everything goes anywhere. For me at first that was sort of weird just trying to use it, it just seemed really unorganised. But once I actually started to use it, it just felt really cool. So I could type somewhere and then draw around it and then put an image and then annotate that image and everything just seemed really unique to the way it's done over here. 
and I think that for some people is going to be a key feature to this. Now the Android app for this is quite simple so the UI is quite simplistic and that could be a good or bad thing. For my use case it doesn't really matter but for some people they may want some more options with the pen types and the brush sizes and stuff like that. It does allow you to change the paper style so you can select from ruled, or grid or just hide and make it a blank canvas. You can change the paper colour but for me that doesn't really give me any options that I want to change it to. So say you wanted like a black or a dark grey or even a light grey, you can't do that with this. All you can do is select from really light coloured stuff. But having said that you can't set any defaults so every time you make a new note it's just reset to a blank thing. So for me for notes I like blind paper it just makes everything more organised but you can't set that as a default so every time I make a new note. I have to go to the view tab and then click the paper icon and then click line paper and there are some annoyances with this app so if you're in the pen mode and you want to type something or just insert something like an image you can't do that unless you click stop for the writing mode and then you go to import an image or write some text and for me that just seems a bit weird they could have handled that quite a bit better And then you can't actually use the pen to manipulate some stuff on the page. So if you've got an image on the page and you select it with the selection tool for the pen, you can't drag it around, but you can do it with everything else. But if you have the image selected with something else, then you can drag both of them around together. But it just seems a bit weird that you can't drag an image around even if you select it. It just tries to select something else and that just seems like a glitch to me. So for me the best features of the OneNote app are its simplicity and the syncing function. So if you have the Office 365 account this could be one of the best note taking apps for you and for me I use it for work all the time because of that because it integrates with my work account and it just works really well seamlessly together. So those for me are the top 3 options for note taking apps on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. If you guys know of any other note taking apps which may be great for this and some that you use you may prefer let me know in the comments below. So if you like this video give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any future content but until next time it's been Subzi here ciao